Yes, yes. A rich. Akeem Richens. Trendsetters. If you don't know me, get to know me. <laughs> My people, how y'all doing out there? I hope everybody is going to have a great weekend. I hope everybody had a productive week. Uh, you know how I like to do. Productivity is important. It's the weekend. We get to chill out now. We get to relax. If you work on the weekends, my apologies. <clears throat> uh, I know some of y'all probably have missed me last week. I didn't come on too much. I just was starting to feel like it's the dog days of summer. Kind of like when you're leading up to the draft. I feel like it, everything gets a little bit repetitive. We start nagging and talking about the same things over and over constantly. So I felt it was necessary for me to just sit back, relax, let things refresh, let more news come out and take it for, for this week. Now, Jeremy, what's going on? Sophie, how you doing? Dala, what's going on, man? What's going on? I'm here. We're going to interact a little bit today on Trendsetters. We don't usually interact, but I felt since I missed the week, I missed everybody and I feel it's necessary to interact. But let's get right into it. Richie Incognito went in went incognito on us. Excuse me, and uh, suddenly retired. Talking about his liver and his kidneys is failing him. Do, don't these players get evaluated at the end of the season? I don't know why you wait until April to realize that your liver and your kidneys was failing on you. I'm pretty sure. You could have had an idea in January and February and March, but April, I guess he woke up, Richie Incognito, and that liver and that kidney and the stress was really ailing him, so he started to make his retirement. We put him on the retirement list, and that, in my opinion, leaves us another glaring hole within our offensive line. Don't get me wrong, Richie Incognito was probably on his way out in his last year, but nevertheless, he filled a hold, a hold. He filled a need in Richie Incognito at the guard position. Now trading away Cordy Glenn. Eric Wood retirement. Richie Incognito's retirement. Those are three quality starters, probably not superstars. Uh, Cordy Glenn is an above average player. Richie Incognito was a Pro Bowl player for us the last three seasons. We had some quality offensive linemen that is not as that is no longer a part of our Bills organization. And I'm here to say I'm concerned. I'm very concerned about our offensive line. I'm very concerned. I see they say what's going on. Uh, Richie trying to get more money. He probably is, but he's 35 years old. One year left. If you want to do us like that, we, we don't want you. We don't want you. So I don't think, I'm not sure, but I don't think Richie Incognito is going to get any more money than he previously had when he took that pay cut. But I'm very concerned with our offensive line. Offensive line is not a position I feel that you could just plug and play. I think you need some cohesiveness along the offensive front, uh, front line, especially with a rookie quarterback. With a rookie quarterback... You want to build that foundation. You want to have uh, your rookie quarterback able to trust his offensive line to protect him. We've seen what can happen to rookie quarterbacks if you don't have a good offensive line. Heck, we even seen it in college. Uh, a lot of uh, Sam Donald, uh, high prospect. USC, we all talk about him every week, every other week. Uh, Cleveland Browns might be getting him. There's other teams, us, we might be looking at Sam Donald. We, we working him out maybe right now. It's Friday. We supposed to be working him out today. So Sam Donald looked like an elite prospect. And he looked pretty elite this season. But he looked like an elite prospect the year before when he had certain offensive linemen in place. That offensive lineman from USC changed drastically. And it kind of affected his play. It probably affected some of his mechanics. And it probably affected the trust that he had with his teammates along that offensive line. So if you go look at some USA, USC tape alone, you will see the difference with the offensive lineman from uh, Sam Donald's sophomore to junior year. And his play kind of dipped. 
So we want our rookie quarterback to have a good offensive line. And right now, it looks as if we have a lot of unproven talent along the offensive line. Our best offensive lineman, in my opinion, may be Deion Dawkins. He played well. Towards the end of the season, he struggled in the beginning. He played well, but he still have to come back. He still have to do it again this year. Hopefully, he doesn't have a sophomore slump. We're going to be expecting a lot from Deion Dawkins this year, and hopefully, he can hold that fort down. Besides Deion Dawkins, we know what Vladimir Dukas is. Vladimir Dukas isn't that good. <laughs> he is what he is. He's been that way since he's been the selection for the New York Jets. I don't expect a Vladimir Dukas to elevate his play now. Jordan Mills, he's not that good either. Let's call a spade a spade here. Former selection of the Chicago Bears, he was a tackle, or supposed to be a bookend tackle. He has been he has been a, a disappointment since he's been drafted by the Chicago Bears. He improved slightly, but that improvement wasn't much. Jordan Mills is what he is, and he is average at best, and I'm being nice when I say average. Ryan Groy, we don't know what Ryan Groy is. He, we had a good stint where Eric Wood broke his leg. Other than that, I don't know how good he is. I don't know if he could sustain success for a 16-game season. He wasn't particularly good at, at guard. Is he going to play center? Is he going to play guard? We got Bordine from the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati was thrilled. Bengals fans was thrilled that Bordine is no longer a Cincinnati Bengal. I'm not uh, happy about them results. I'm not happy about what I heard from him. Newhouse is suspect. I can make the case that our entire offensive line is suspect. And if you have an entire offensive line that's suspect, how the hell is our rookie quarterback going to be successful. So that's major concerns that I have along the offensive line front. Let me see if I can get some, take some questions, see if I missed anything. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, Charlie, Nick, what's going on? Joel, what's going on? Still doesn't change your draft strategy, I hope. Now, it, Patrick, Patrick, you're saying it doesn't change uh, your draft strategy. I would think it shouldn't change your draft strategy, especially along the early early rounds, right? No matter what you say, no matter how you put it, play around it, we still need our quarterback. So no, our draft strategy should not change in terms of getting a quarterback. We need that quarterback. We have to go get that quarterback. Don't matter uh, possibly what it can cost. A lot of speculations have us moving up to number two to New York Giants. You see they have a blueprint. I don't know what the hell that means, by the way. <laughs> they saying we have a blueprint. I don't what, what, what does that mean? You have a blueprint of, of a trade in place. We hope to see what that means come draft day, but it shouldn't change much in terms of needing a quarterback. But what about the other positions? How we know that offensive line weakness that we have, the holes that we have amongst our offensive line didn't change the draft strategy for mid to later rounds. Some could say we need a defensive tackle. Do we still go and get that defensive tackle now? Or do we plug an offensive lineman in there? Do we still go and get a cornerback now? Or do we go plug an offensive lineman in there? Who's to say that the receivers we have on our roster, especially with the Richie Incognito retirement, who's to say that we're going to draft a receiver anymore. I, I, I personally love Anthony Miller. We have a lot of people that love Calvin Ridley. I don't know if we're going to draft a receiver anymore. We need offensive linemen. We need quality offensive linemen. We need offensive linemen that can gel with our rookie quarterback. We can't have these gap stops. It's okay to have it at a guard or at a center position, but we can't have four gap stop, stops along the offensive lineman. And I'm not too sure, me personally, if I'm going to go ahead and draft a receiver anymore. Offensive lineman, offensive line is more important to me right now than getting a wide receiver. That's how big I feel an offensive line is. Now again, how how would you go and get an offensive lineman? Me personally, I don't like drafting offensive linemen in the first round unless it's a tackle. Y'all could agree to disagree. There's a lot of Will Hernandez talk from UTEP at 12. I like Will Hernandez a lot. I'm not sold. Matter of fact, I am not uh, about drafting a Will Hernandez at 12. That's just me. 
He's a guard. He might be a, a, a booking guard. He might be a, a quality guard for years. But I can go and get a Billy Price from Ohio State in the second round. I can go and get an Isaiah Wynn uh, from Georgia in the second or third round. I can go and get a Braden Smith from Auburn. He's a tackle in the later rounds. So that's why I'm not really... I'm not really high on drafting a guard specifically in the first round. If you had a bookend tackle, if you had a can't-miss tackle, I'm all for getting a can't-miss tackle in the first round of the draft. We don't have no can't-miss tackles here. Uh, McClinchy, he may, be, he may be close. He may be close. But are we going to draft him in the first round? Who knows? I just know I wouldn't go guard so high in the draft. But I do know that it needs to be addressed. And I might want to address that position in the second round. Uh, assuming we keep a second round pick. What's going on, Jason? What, what have I missed? Nick, what's going on? Uh, Des Bryant will be another T.O. if he comes to Buffalo. We're going to discuss Des Bryant. We'll definitely discuss. Matter of fact, let's touch on Des Bryant right now right quick. Des Bryant has been released from uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Everybody that gets released from teams, especially a high price name. <laughs> uh, our fans, our fan base are like, should we go grab him? Should we go get him? Should we go grab him? I don't know. I don't know about Des Bryant. Would I like him to come in? Yes, I would like him to come in. But do we need another Des Bryant? Uh, do we need another guy that possibly have trouble separating from guys? We have some. We have speculations that Zay Jones have trouble speculating from guys. Uh, separating from guys. Kelvin Benjamin uh, uses his body to uh, uh, get his positioning to make make contested catches but he's not necessarily a separator do we want another guy that can't separate i am i am not for signing a des bryant i'm just going to keep a spade a spade with here i know the name is nice the name is pretty we need receivers i'm just not for signing a des bryant we see how uh, he was with dallas very successful i believe he regressed a little bit Half of him is regression. The other half is uh, that Prescott couldn't get him the damn ball in the necessary situations. But he has a temperament to him. He has an attitude to him. He has a little diva to him. I think Terrell Owens, when he came over to the Buffalo Bills, he calmed down with his diva ways. He wasn't, he wasn't like the old Terrell Owens from San Francisco days. He wasn't that type of player. He didn't have that type of mantra. He didn't have that type of attitude. Uh, towards him when he came over to the Buffalo Bills. I still think Des Bryant feels that he's an elite receiver and he has some of them d diva ways to him. And me personally, our rookie wide receiver, our rookie quarterback, our future quarterback does not need that. So I would pass on Des Bryant. I don't know how the Bills organization feels about him, but I would definitely pass. Uh, Lamar Jackson might be more valuable with an O-line we got. Either that or a quarterback that can drop three steps and let it go. Again, Lamar Jackson is a very interesting prospect. And I, I, I believe in that wholeheartedly, especially with the offensive line we have now. Spread offense might be the way to go. Lamar Jackson would be an intriguing option for our Buffalo Bills. But at some point, you're going to have to take that three-step drop, that five-step drop, that seven-step drop, and get rid of the ball. At some point, you're going to have to make the necessary throws to win you a ball game. And while I like Lamar Jackson, while I like that spread offense, I still think we need uh, a guy that can consistently deliver the ball passing. I'm not sure if Lamar Jackson can consistently Deliver that football passing. I'm not sure if Lamar Jackson can come down with two minutes left in the game, down three, down five, down six, and drive the uh, drive the length of the field, strictly throwing the football, which defensive teams with, de with good defensive coordinators are going to do just that. Make Lamar Jackson play quarterback. So even though I know we have holes within the offensive line, eventually we're going to have to start plugging them holes. Whether it's this year or next year, eventually we're going to have to start plugging them holes and our quarterback is going to have to drop back to pass the ball to win football games. Nick, what's going on? As much as I've been wanting to see us trade up and get our guy, I can see us staying at 12 for Raekwon, Raekwon Smith at 12 and a guy like Mason Rudolph at 22. Like, again, I'm not a fan of Mason Rudolph. I, I, I understand that he's a smart guy. 
He's a high character guy. He did well when he was with Steve Mariucci, uh, mirroring the place. If y'all seen that breakdown, he did a good job. I just don't like his release. I don't like the way he throws the football. I don't like the way he throws the deep ball. And I'm just not as high on Mason Rudolph as other guys. Me personally, I want to try to uh, maximize my draft capital at the same time get my quarterback. Would I trade up to number two? Again, if they're in love with a guy, if you're in love with a Sam Donald, if you're in love with a Josh Rosen, those, uh, if you're in love with a Josh Allen, you have to go and get your guy, do whatever you have to do to get your guy. At the same time, I want to minimize some draft picks. I may want to see what happens at the five spot, at the number six spot, at the number seven spot, and then make my trade uh, for Baker Mayfield. I love Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield is my guy. <laughs> uh, I think he can be uh, a great asset to the Buffalo Bills fan base, the Buck Buffalo Bills locker room, and to the Buffalo Bills community. But again, we'll see. No opinion is a wrong opinion. Carl, what's going on? Bills had holes now uh, before. Now they really have them. They need to draft and fill in holes. Again, I seen something about Brandon Bean talking about he's going to draft best player available. We're going to see if that plays into fruition on draft night. We're going to see if Brandon Bean is really going to draft best player available. I'm excited. I'm anxious to see what he's going to do, how he's going to do it. I personally feel in my heart they're going to move up. I know we have holes, but we ain't do make all these trades. We ain't trade Sammy Watkins and Ronald Darby and trade Glenn to flip first round picks just to stay there. I just, I, I don't think so. Would I like it? Would I mind it? I wouldn't mind it. But if you're thinking about the philosophy of, of the Buffalo Bills and what's been happening, you can't ignore the fact that we're going to look to trade up at some point. I would be shocked, me personally, even though, again, I had a... One of my one of my other podcasts, I was talking about maybe it was necessary for us to stay at 12. But that's me talking as a fan. If you're looking from the Bills perspective or if you want to put a GM hat on, they didn't make all these moves just to stay there. So I think eventually we're going to move up. Jason, what's going on? We have receivers. Tyrod just didn't get them the ball. Our receivers are fine. We have receivers open all the field every game. Again, Receiver was definitely a position I would think we would have targeted or we would target in the NFL draft. I don't think we were targeting a receiver in the first round at number 12. I know there's a lot of Calvin Ridley fans. I just didn't see the receiver as the most glaring need uh, to go in the first round number 12. At the same time, I did feel that we needed a receiver at some point in this NFL draft. With the opening up of guard... And Richie uh, incognito, incognito retiring, I'm just not sure if I would go that direction anymore. Again, I feel that quarterback is the most important position. I feel that we still can't ignore the linebacker position. But them other positions that could have went either way, like defensive tackle, like cornerback, like one uh, wide receiver, one of those positions is going to now have to take a back burner for an offensive lineman. I really feel that way. Man, if if you could bring Des Bryant in, that would solve the receiver problem. You can make you can take a receiver later in the draft if we happen to trade up for a quarterback. Uh, Nick, Nick wants Des Bryant again. We don't know what's going to happen. My personal opinion, I don't think we go after Des Bryant. I just, I, I, I don't think so. I just, that's just how I feel about it. it anything's possible. Anything can happen. I don't feel that. We're going to go and get him. I'm not sure how Des Bryant would feel about coming to Buffalo. And I damn sure know Des Bryant mm -hmm. is not mm -hmm. going to take what we pay him. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Des Bryant can get paid more money elsewhere than he would get paid. Than Brandon Bean would pay him to come to Buffalo. So that's just why I, I don't see it. When Cowboys look took Martin, they already had Smith and Free. Uh, hey, hey, that's a good point. When Cowboys took Martin, they did have Smith and Free. They wanted to solidify. They wanted to solidify that offensive line position. And don't forget, let's not forget, Cowboys. They went ahead and, and drafted the guy that I really felt that Doug Whaley and Rex Ryan should have drafted, the kid from LSU, who they said uh, had a murder charge and he beat the murder charge or, or he was acquitted or however that situation happened. He later signed with the Dallas Cowboys. Their offensive line was intact. They still went and got him as well. So again. 
that's that's a good point. Whoever wrote that for my team, that's a good point that you brought out. I personally think we need to address that offensive line situation. How great or how good our rookie quarterback is going to be if he's constantly under pressure. A first year rookie quarterback, he needs a clear mindset, in my opinion. He needs that clear mindset. He don't need to be worried about every damn down that he throws the ball, that he drops back the pass, that he's going to get hit, that he's going to get walloped. That can mess up a rookie quarterback, especially a rookie quarterback psyche. That can mess up a rookie quarterback's mechanics. That could deter a rookie quarterback. So I think it's vital that we address that offensive line position somewhere in the draft. Nick, Zay, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. He's going to end up in Washington. That's Brian. Hey, he may end up in Washington. That might not be a bad fit. He, he, in the NFC East, Des Bryant in the NFC East, he has Alex Smith. He has a veteran quarterback that can definitely get the, get him the ball. Washington can use a receiver. Uh, and Des Bryant would love to play the Cowboys twice a year. I would love to see Des Bryant and Josh Norman on the same team. <laughs> that would be an interesting setup with the Washington Redskins. And I wouldn't be mad to see Washington and Dallas on, on primetime games. Bring him in. Hey, Nick, he wants to bring him in. Again, Des Bryant, you want Des Bryant? I'm not necessarily sure. Jeremy Macklin's still out there, just putting it out there. Jeremy Macklin, Dylan, good point. He's still out there. Jeremy Macklin, he got hurt with the Ravens last year. I don't know how much he produced. I'm pretty sure when he thinks about it in hindsight, he's seen where we went. He's seen where the Baltimore Ravens was. They, they had their chance. They had their opportunity. But at the end of the day, the Buffalo Bills made the playoffs. I'm not sure if Sean McDermott is even going to go that route again. I'm not sure if Brandon Bean is going to go that route again with Jeremy Macklin. So he's still out there. But again, he may be out there for a reason. Uh, he wouldn't want to be here. Christian, uh, Christian uh, Menifee, uh, that, if you're talking about Des Bryant, he may not want to be out here. Uh, it's a Buffalo, in Buffalo. Buffalo, cold weather state. We know Des Bryant. He loved the Cowboys. He, I, I thought he loved the Cowboys. I thought Jerry Jones loved him. It seems like they had a, a dis distasteful uh, meeting. Des Bryant reportedly walking out. Again, Buffalo. I don't see Buffalo paying Des Bryant the money that he thinks he's worth at the end of the day. Dennis. Baker to Bryant for six. Hey, that, hey, <laughs> hey, I like the Baker Mayfield. I don't know about the Des Bryant. Again, I like Des Bryant. I like the name. I do think he regressed a little bit. Part of the regression was for him. Part of the regression was for Dak, Dak Prescott. Hopefully, he can get with a quarterback that can, that can rejuvenate Des Bryant, especially when it's time to pay the Cowboys. We have no choice but to draft Jackson. Hey, we have choices. We have choice choices. We just have to be smart. With how we doing things. We got to be smart with our draft picks. We got to be smart with our drafting. And we got to under, um, understand what's necessary. What's most necessary for our Buffalo Bills team at this point in time. And man, it's nice how I like it. Yeah, I rock it everywhere I go now. I, I rock it everywhere I go. Everybody comes to me and tells me you're a Bills fan. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> a lot of people come and we have arguments. I'm like, listen, what fan are you? They say Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I kind of shut my mouth and keep it moving. But we coming. We definitely coming. James. James Butler, what's going on? Smith probably gone before 12. I love him, but I think he's too good to slip. Again, Raekwon Smith, he may be too good to slip. He may be gone by 12, may or may not. Again, my favorite linebacker in the draft is Tremaine Edmonds. Tremaine Edmonds, in my opinion, is the best pro uh, linebacker prospect in this NFL draft. Awards aside for Raekwon Smith. I like Raekwon Smith. I think he's going to be a hell of a linebacker as well. But that combination of size, speed, and athleticism, it applies to Tremaine Edmonds. Raekwon Smith will look rather small next to a Gronkowski. We have small de uh, defensive backs. Let's get some specimen in there. And Tremaine Edmonds, in my opinion, is a specimen. And I would love to have him on the team. Bean keeps using the word value. Hey, I, and I believe him. He values his picks. He values players. McBean is not going to do anything to him that doesn't make sense. So we're going to see what happens on draft night. Dez isn't the same Dez anyway. Jason, um, again, Dez probably isn't the same Dez. Can he help our team? I, I wouldn't question that. I wouldn't question Dez helping our team. Again, I don't think the price... 
I don't think the price would be to his liking. And I'm not just sold on anybody and everybody getting released. Any big name getting released, we want to talk about him coming to Buffalo. No disrespect to Des Bryant. I like him as a football player. I like the kid. Again, I think I'm trying to think in terms of our GM, our organization, our management, and what we have done already. Uh, Mick Bean, Brandon Bean, he said we don't have too much money. In one of his in one of his interviews, we don't have too much money right now. Most of that money is for the draft. Most of that money is for uh, guys that may get hurt. So uh, Des Bryant is still going to command that name. Des Bryant is still going to command seven, eight, nine, possibly ten million dollars. Uh, so I just don't think we're we're, we're going to get him. Des isn't coming here. Come on, hey hey Patrick, we seen here on that. Come on man, Des ain't coming here. This is not coming here. You think our biggest need outside of you think our biggest need outside of quarterback is linebacker or O-line? That's a hell of a question, man. That's a hell of a question. Now, I think our biggest need outside of quarterback is offensive lineman. Let me tell you why. Sean McDermott is a defensive guy. Sean McDermott is a defensive coach. If you're a defensive coach, and you're not necessarily an offensive guy. I know we got Brian Dable. You're not necessarily an offensive guy. Sean McDermott, you should be able to, to maximize some of your defensive players' talents. I do think we're going to get a linebacker, if not two. I'm hoping we get at least one, and I think we're, or we are going to get at least one. I just don't know where we're going to get that linebacker anymore. I don't know if it's going to be the first round anymore. It may be second. It may be third. The linebacker, linebacking corps in this year's draft class is very deep, deeper than last year. We got Matt Milano in the fifth round. So who knows if offensive linemen took that step up and linebacker, even though we still may draft a linebacker, took that step back. That step back. You have Lorenzo Carter. From Georgia Bulldogs, who tested very well at the combine, who may be a mid-round selection. We may have to start looking in that direction, depending on how we feel about these offensive linemen in the second and third rounds. But I think offensive linemen is very, very vital, very, very important, because we are having a rookie quarterback. Hopefully, our franchise quarterback come in to our organization, and I think he needs a, 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 a very... Good the offensive line or at least an offensive line that can keep some pressure off him. We don't want our, our rookie quarterback dropping back the pass every minute and have to look over his shoulder and, and have to collapse out the pocket, leave the pocket or worry about his pocket presence uh, and messing up his mechanics. So that's my main concern and that's why I think offensive linemen may be just as important as the linebacker position right now. I think the 49ers, Chris, what's going on? I think the 49ers could be in the mix. Plus, they have almost 50, 000, 50 million in cap room. For Des Bryant, definitely. They definitely can be in, a, um, in, a, in the mix. And Des, and Des Bryant would actually be an excellent fit over there in San Francisco. You have Jimmy Gar Garoppolo. You have your speed guy in Marquise Goodwin. They need other receiver talent. They can go and get a Des Bryant. They can go and get a Des Bryant and still go and draft a receiver and create that nucleus, create that foundation around uh, a Jimmy Gar uh, Garoppolo so he can sustain success as well. So that would be a good fit. That's a great point, Chris. James, Des and Allen and Hernandez and inside linebacker and rookie wide receiver and great offense offense will be good and should match the Patriots. I don't think we will ever match the Patriots until Tom Brady retires. I, you know, we watch Patriots games, Patriots and Bills games every year, but in the back of our mind, we kind of know the end result, right? We know the end result, but the fan in us is going to watch the game anyway. Nine times out of ten, the Patriots is going to beat us. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, the Patriots is going to beat us. This year, I don't know how we're going to look as a team. We made the playoffs last year. We may take a step back this year. We have to talk facts and reality here. It's possible that we may regress a little bit, take one step back to take our couple steps forward. In 2018, uh, I'm hoping for the best. But we definitely going to see what happens. Des Bryant and Allen and Hernandez. Which Allen are you talking about? You talking about Josh Allen? You're talking. I know you're talking about Will Hernandez from. Um, I know you're talking about Hernandez from UTEP, the guard. I really like him. I don't like him at twelve. <laughs> I don't like him first round pick twelve. But I really like him. 
Uh, but we'll definitely see what happens. Christian, we are drafting an O-line and QB first two picks. Hey, I wouldn't be opposed to that. It, it all depends on what we give up to move up. I would, again, I wouldn't mind it, but I would be shocked. I would be shocked if we, if we, mo- if we don't move up in this draft. Part of me feels like, hey, Baker Mayfield may slip. Part of me feels like one of these quarterbacks is going to slip, but we cannot actually wait for that. We can't wait for a quarterback to slip. We have to go get our guy if we if we see a guy we love. Hopefully, we have something in place where we can get our guy and still keep some draft picks. We have next year first round. I said earlier that if we want to move up in certain situations, we can go ahead. We have the cap room next year. We have about $80 million in cap space. We can go ahead and sacrifice a first round pick next year. We could go ahead and sacrifice a first or a second round pick next year. Keep some picks this year. Fill in as much holes as we can and still get the quarterback, our franchise quarterback. I think Brandon Bean is a very smart individual. So I think he's going to do what's necessary uh, for our team, the Buffalo Bills. Jason, what's going on? Thing is, though, our rookie quarterback is probably not going to play year one or maybe even year two. So hopefully we can get our old line fixed before the rookie has to start. How you know that? How we know that? How we know Baker Mayfield? Baker Mayfield has been looked over his whole career. Baker Mayfield was a walk on. For um, Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield wasn't looked at as a highly talented prospect out of high school. How we know that uh, it's time for Baker Mayfield, if we was to draft him, to step up and be a starter? He's not being walked over anymore. He's not being overlooked anymore. We don't know if we're going to wait and our quarterback, our rookie quarterback won't start this year. The best man is going to win camp. If we drafted Josh Allen, if we drafted Lamar Jackson, they might need the most work. But we're going to play the best man in draft. I don't think we're handing over any jobs to A.J. McCarron. It's not a guarantee A.J. McCarron is going to be the starter for the Buffalo Bills. He's getting paid $5 million. He's getting paid backup money. He's coming in and competing for a starting job. And if that rookie uh, quarterback outperforms him, guess what? Our rookie quarterback is going to be the starter. Christian, Mason Rudolph. Again, Mason Rudolph, a lot of people like. I'm a little sketchy on Mason. I'm a little sketchy. And it gives Jimmy Gar- uh, Garoppolo another weapon. The more uh, weapons for Jim- Jimmy Garoppolo, the better. Again, Des Bryant looks to be, uh, looks like a good fit in San Francisco. Des Bryant may have some revenge on his mind. He may have a revenge factor on his mind. So he might be looking at a Philadelphia Eagle or, or a Washington Redskins. Uh, to unite with. We'll definitely see what happens with Dez. Edmonds at 12. Is he's there? Take him. Um, definitely. It, it, it all depends. Who else is there? Is Baker, if, if we can't trade up, right? Because it's possible. It's possible we can't trade up. That is, it, it's always possible. We're going to try to. I know that for sure. But it's also possible we can't be successful in trading up. Why? Because it takes two to tangle. Another team has to be willing to trade with us for us to move up. Now, if we're at 12 and Sam Donald is gone, Josh Allen is gone, Josh Rosen is gone, Baker Mayfield is gone, then again, yes, I would definitely agree with Tremaine Edmonds at 12. Then I would agree with Tremaine Edmonds. If Baker Mayfield is sitting at 12, if we can't move up, and Baker Mayfield is sitting there at 12, and Tremaine Edmonds is sitting there at 12, I highly doubt we go and draft Tremaine Edmonds. That's just my take on it. Nobody is signing in. Nobody is signing in Buffalo, bro. Wake up. Nobody is signing. I don't know who, who you mean. Do you agree with me with Des Bryant not signing in Buffalo? If we, do we agree there? If you agree with that sentiment, then definitely. I don't think Des Bryant is signing. We'll see. Leroy, what's going on? Dave Rutt Myers, what's going on, bro? How you doing? Justin, do you do you have a YouTube account and SoundCloud account and iTunes? Uh, Spotify and account, bro. De- hey, all you got to do, that's a good question, Justin. All you got to do is uh, go on YouTube, Bills Fanatics. I will, my uh, trendsetters get posted every week. Every time I do a show on trendsetters, it get posted on uh, on the Bills Fanatics, Buffalo Fanatics YouTube page. Subscribe to YouTube. We have a bunch of podcasts on there, bunch of great podcasts besides my podcast. <laughs> we have a bunch of great guys on there talking Buffalo, talking sports. And definitely, definitely subscribe. Do I have my own personal? I don't have my own personal. I do, but I haven't uploaded no videos. I may start doing that now. Since you're talking about it, if I 
get more feedback, who knows? I may start doing that now and doing my own little videos to the side as well as the videos on Bills Fanatics. But definitely mm -hmm. subscribe to our YouTube page. Maurice, what's going on? D-line will be a beast in 2019 draft. Again, uh, D-tackle was looked at as a, as a possible, as a possible uh, a, a draft spot, right? I know we took some some uh, visits in this past week with certain draft prospects. But with this news with in, uh, Richie Incognito and a combination of Kyle Williams coming back to the fold as defensive, uh, at defensive tackle, we have a decent rotation in Star Latoule, Kyle Williams, mm -hmm. Adolphus mm -hmm. Washington. We have a decent rotation there. So again, the tackle might get overlooked in the draft. If it doesn't get overlooked in the draft, it's going to be a late round, fifth, sixth round selection. We're going to see. We need it. We need if we draft a QB at top five, he starts day one. Hey, I, I, who knows? I'm not opposed to that. It may be possible. Again, AJ McCarron didn't come to Buffalo to sit. <laughs> he didn't come to Buffalo to sit. We have to look at size at both sides of the spectrum. Uh, AJ McCarron is going to compete for a job. And I don't know where we're going to draft the quarterback, but whoever is drafted is going to compete. I don't think he's just our organization is just going to say, hey, we drafted the quarterback. You're starting no matter what. He might. Who knows? There's a lot of people out there that that feel that we need to enthrust a rookie quarterback from day one to get all them hiccups out from day one. There's others that believe rookie quarterbacks need to sit. Our particular situation, rookie quarterback versus veteran, a veteran quarterback that hasn't had his chance. They're going to be in an open competition and we're going to see what happens. Rob, what's going on? I give both ones and next year's one to give up two, then draft. O line second best player, uh, best available after. I agree with that wholeheartedly, Rob. If we do move up the two, I am willing to give up both first round picks, twelve and twenty two, and I'll give up uh, a first round pick in the twenty nineteen draft, mainly because we have a lot of cap room. We can sign some guys. We able we, we can afford some high priced players that could possibly make up for that first round uh, draft pick that we may trade. And give that to the Giants. I may even throw in another mid-round pick. I'll give the Giants three first-round picks, two this year, one next year, and one more mid-round pick somewhere this year, maybe next year. What more can the Giants want? What more can they want? If they want more than that, then hey, see you later. But that's just how I feel about it. Jason, I think AJ McCann will be our guy for the next couple years, maybe more. I agree with you on everything you comment on. Like me, like me and you know our team. <laughs> hey, we all we all think we know our team. We all want to know our team. At the end of the day, we're going to have different opinions, but we all want to see the same result. And that's the Buffalo Bills, our team being successful. I am completely opposite on Mayfield. If we get Mayfield, see what you're saying here. If we get Mayfield. This year, we'll be looking for another quarterback in the draft a couple years from now. Whoa, bold statement. Bold statement, Jason. We do disagree with that. I believe Baker Mayfield can be that guy. But we're going to see. Dave Myers, what's going on? We ain't, we ain't getting live soon. When I get, when I go over, get over this death funk. Def, hey, Dave Myers, take your time. Feel better. I'll hold the fork down for you in the meantime. And when you're feeling better... Myself, Dave Myers, we'll definitely be getting on live, co-hosting a show together. Peter, what's going on, Pete? What's going on? Yes, sir. But I had to answer some questions. Again, offensive line is vital in my opinion. And I just believe that that is uh, taking the forefront mm -hmm. in our draft somewhere along, along in the draft. I know linebackers is just as important. We got Sean McDermott there. Sean McDermott needs his quarterback on defense, but we need an offensive line, a decent offensive line group to protect our future franchise quarterback. And that's just how I feel about it. Uh, before I get out of here, I'm going to see if any more questions pop up. Uh, Fred Jackson, he retired. Signed his one-day contract to be uh, a Buffalo Bill, to retire a Buffalo Bill. Salute to Fred Jackson. Almost 6,000 yards rushing. Almost 3,000 yards receiving. Uh, he had eight, eight uh, seasons, if, if I'm not mistaken, with our Buffalo Bills. We appreciate, I appreciate everything he's done for Buffalo. I appreciate what he's meant to the Buffalo Bills. And it's deservingly so. It's, it's it right. It's right. It feels right. That Fred Jackson gets to retire a Buffalo Bill. I wish Stevie Johnson do the same thing. Stevie Johnson, 
Come on over, sign your one-day contract. Let's get you on the phones. Sign your contract. Retire a Buffalo Bills Stevie Johnson. Stevie Johnson is one of my favorite receivers, Buffalo Bills receivers of all time. My three favorite receivers of all time. One, Andre Reid. Two, Stevie Johnson. Three, Eric Moulds. My favorite Buffalo receivers of all time. I would love for Stevie Johnson to come on over, do a Fred Jackson, and retire a Buffalo Bill. Uh, Sophie. Uh, Dave, in, in Mayfield, we trust. Hey, Mayfield, I trust. I trust Mayfield. A lot of people's concerned about the weather. A lot of people's concerned about the height. I'm concerned with production and can you play? Can you play? It's what I care about. Russell Wilson is not that tall. Drew Brees is not that tall. Can you play? Those two guys can play. I believe Baker Mayfield can play. I know he has some red flags. I believe that's some maturity. We all, we all grew, grow up. We all have some red flags in our lives. <laughs> so <clears throat> definitely, I think that was a maturity issue. And the older he get, the more mature Baker Mayfield will become. So I'm all in for getting Baker Mayfield. My two favorite quarterbacks in this draft, Baker Mayfield and Josh Rosen. Give me one of the, get me one of those two guys and I'm happy. Get me one of those two guys and I'm dancing around my community in my drawers on. <laughs> because I'll be that happy. That Josh Rosen and Baker Mayfield or Baker Mayfield will become a Buffalo Bill. But again, whoever we draft, I just hope it pans out. You better hit. Whoever we draft, you better hit. Sophie, how bad do you think our run game will be affected by our O-line troubles? I think it will be affected. I think it, it, it would be, it can be greatly affected. Now, if Brian Dable is going to implement that power that power O-line scheme, that power blocking scheme, then John Miller may come back in the fold and he may produce. John Miller, he had an excellent second season under Rex Ryan. He struggled a little bit his rookie year. He had an excellent second season, in my opinion, with Rex Ryan. You go in, you change offensive philosophies, you change offensive lineman concepts a little bit, and we have a little bias. I don't, I don't care what anybody tells me. It's a little bias with our offensive line, our, our coaches in the offensive line. Certain coaches, they want to bring their own guys in and implement their own guys. I know John Miller struggled a bit, <clears throat> but you can't tell me that Vladimir Dukas is better than John Miller. I'm going to make a bold statement here, though. Juan Castillo, I predict this is going to be Juan Castillo last year as the Buffalo Bills offensive line coach. Juan Castillo is, I don't know what we see in the guy. I believe he's greatly overrated. And I think it's going to come into the fold this year. He has offensive linemen that he's going to have to coach up. I don't think he's going to have that ability to coach these guys up. Bold prediction. Juan Castillo will be this. This will be his last year as the Buffalo Bills offensive line coach. <laughs> Pete, what's going on? The Pagulas just the Pagula just picked up. Pagulas just picked up Des Bryant. Um, Pagulas just picked up Des Bryant. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you're saying exactly. Are you telling me that we just signed Des Bryant? Do I have to go on my phone right now? I got the phone right here. Where did Des Bryant go? Uh, I'm not sure yet, but we, I'm going to see as soon as I get off. Pierre, what's going on, brother? What's going on? Um, once again, it's your boy A. Rich, Akeem Richens. You've been in tune to Trendsetters. I don't usually interact while I do the podcast, but I missed the week. I felt that it was necessary to take a step back for a second. Uh, everything can get a little bit uh, repetitive. So I just wanted to take a step back last week, take my week off, let some more news and notes come about, and I'm right back at it this this week. Again, A. Rich, Akeem Richens. If you don't know me, get to know me. Until next time.